Turning now to your community focus, pain at the pump. Should Rhode Island suspend its gas tax until these fuel prices drop further? Here to talk about that and more, Secretary of State and Democratic candidate for Governor Nellie Gorbea. Thanks so much for being here. Thank you, Kim, for having me. So you have proposed suspending the 35 cent per gallon state gas tax. Connecticut chose to do it. Massachusetts has said not so fast. Why do you think it would work here? You know, I'm, I'm looking at what everyday Rhode Islanders are telling me on the street, which is they're having to make really hard choices between groceries or rent mm. uh, and, and whether or not they fill a, a tank of gas to go to work. And so I wanted to make sure that we said to these Rhode Islanders, we hear you. Let's pause this momentarily and at the same time really dig down and start moving ourselves off fossil fuels to alternative. And when you say let's pause this temporarily, how long is temporarily? You know, right now what I've said is, you know, it's, it's while this spike in the prices happen. Um, so it could be several months. I mean, I would, I would take it on a month by month basis uh, because that is a very volatile part of our economy right now. My colleague Ted Nisi looked into this a little bit more closely. He says the tax generated close to $140 million in revenue for the state last fiscal year. How do you make that up? Well, but you're not making up a whole year. You're only doing a few months uh, at a time kind of thing. We also have, thankfully, a, uh, a very nice uh, federal largesse right now. And there's a lot of savings that have been generated during the pandemic. And so I believe that we can do this for everyday Rhode Islanders that are really hurting. And just last week, your opponent in the governor's race, Helena Folk, said on 12 News at 4, this is just a short-term solution and we need longer-term fixes. What's your response to that? No, I th so that was part of my statement as well. So uh, I'm glad that she agrees with me. Uh, we, we can do this uh, temporarily on a short-term ba basis, but what we really need to do is to, to really invest in alternative fuels and alternative energy and make sure that transit is available to as many people as possible. I want to turn to some news that broke yesterday. The FBI is now investigating the ILO Group contract that's come under a lot of scrutiny during Governor McKee's tenure. I'm curious what went through your mind when you heard that a state contract was under investigation, under federal investigation? You know, I think like many Rhode Islanders, I was dismayed. I was dismayed and I had flashbacks to other moments where the FBI has been at our state house. And this is not the Rhode Island we need right now. We need to move forward. And I am um, I'm, I'm, I'm really thrilled to be able to offer Rhode Islanders an alternative. My candidacy really shows that you can have accountability and transparency in government every single day of being an elected official. I want to ask you about some controversial $3,000 bonuses that are being offered to state workers, both union and non-union at this point. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but you chose not to give those bonuses to your non-union employees? That's correct. When I received the budget from the governor, uh, our budget included bonuses for the unionized employees, but not for the non-union employees. So I followed what the governor sent to us. I am not going to go into red ink on my budget because of the governor's mandate. Do you think, though, that state workers deserve some sort of a bonus for working through the pandemic? I think that state workers, uh, many of them on the front lines, uh, definitely have done an amazing job through this pandemic. What I want to see is the bulk of these monies, and I think this is why what's challenging about the bonus payment is that what we really want to see is how is this going to improve long term uh, the future of our state. If you were governor today, would you have approved those bonuses in the fashion that they have been yeah. given out and in the amount that they are? I would have done something very differently than what the governor did. Um, I would have negotiated a different situation with regards uh, to the bonuses. And what would that have been? That would have been probably uh, something where, there, where you would be able to say this uh, employee was on the front lines. This is why this bonus is required. People who were able to stay at home, for example, and able to work under different conditions uh, maybe wouldn't have gotten the bonus. And I would have looked for longer term results. What is it that we're getting for the money that we're investing so that Rhode Islanders know that this pandemic money is good for the future? And we've got less than a minute left, but the last fundraising quarter, uh, you were in third place. The next fundraising quarter closes in, in just a week. Are we going to see you in a, in a different spot? What are we? What should we expect? In well, terms it's hard of to say, right? Because nobody knows what the other numbers are. But I have to tell you, this race, uh, this quarter is going extremely well. 
and my candidacy has a lot of momentum. And I think uh, you'll see that my fundraising numbers are going to be the best that I've ever had in my entire political career. Gubernatorial candidate and Rhode Island Secretary of State Nellie Gorbea, thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Kim. And she faces four other Democrats currently seeking the seat. They include incumbent Governor Dan McKee, former Secretary of State Matt Brown, former CVS executive Helena Folks, and businessman Luis Daniel Munoz. On the Republican side, political newcomer Ashley Kalis has also just joined that race.